What's up everyone? Welcome back to my kitchen for another video. My name is Derek from Simnite Nutrition and this is another video for my amazing food series. So today we're gonna to be talking all about the underappreciated lentil. new to this channel or you're new to this series, welcome. And what I'm trying to do with this amazing food series is get people excited about whole plant-based foods. There's so many amazing foods out there and they have so many amazing qualities and I just want to share them with you guys. So I'm going to be talking all about the history of the food, cool fun facts about the food. We're going to talk about the nutritional content of it. Obviously this is a nutrition based channel. And then we'll also go over some preparation methods and my favorite way to eat it. And I'll always share a recipe with you guys like I'm going to at the end of this one today. And it's a really simple one today, but it is packed with nutrition and protein as well. So I just love lentils. <laughs> I have them a lot, like probably at least four times a week, probably sometimes more on some weeks. And like I said, I just find them so easy to eat. They're super versatile. They're so nutrient dense and they are extremely, extremely cheap, like probably one of the cheapest foods out there. And uh, considering the nutrient content per dollar, they're probably one of the best bangs for the buck that you could possibly buy. And beyond that, they are high in protein and they're one of the richest sources of plant-based protein out there and they contain a good spectrum of amino acids which is awesome so if you are like an athlete or you're trying to build some muscle definitely consider eating more lentils but we will talk more about the nutrition towards the end of the video but for now let's talk a little bit about the history of the lentil <laughs> Don't worry, it's not long. Lentils are a really ancient food. They were actually first harvested over 8,000 years ago, making it one of the first foods ever to be cultivated. So lentils are a type of pulse along with beans and chickpeas, and the term pulse is used to describe the edible seed of legumes. So interestingly enough, Canada is one of the world's largest suppliers of lentils. And I knew that we grew some lentils, but I didn't know that we were one of the world's largest suppliers of them. So they don't actually grow the lentils where I live. They don't grow them on the coast, so not on the east coast or the west coast, but they grow them in the middle. And it's something that we call the prairies. It's a very flat, very arid place. And lentils do really, really well in dry climates, which is one of the things that makes them so amazing. And they're actually being studied for helping to relieve famine in a lot of of countries around the world that, you know, don't have many food sources. Lentils could be one of their saving graces. So farming in the middle of Canada is done on a huge scale. As you can see in this video, like it's kind of crazy to see because you think of Canada and like farms and you figure that we just have like, you know, some guy like old Bob out there with his like John Deere tractor just pulling like a little harvester or something like that. But no, this is on like absolutely massive industrial scale. And yeah, we produce a lot of lentils along with two other countries and they are India and Turkey. What I found really interesting about lentils is how easy they are to harvest. So in this video, you can see the guy just basically scrunches up some of the pods and the lentils just like fall right into his hands. The lentils that are most commonly found in grocery stores are the large green lentils and the split red lentils. So if you've never tried lentils before, don't go for the green lentils first because I find them to be pretty dry and like not all that tasty. Um, but, but all of them, as you can see, are like some of the cheapest foods out there and at like $1.50 per bag, that is some cheap, cheap gains. Fine, we're gonna do this, eh? All right. So if you're looking for them in the grocery store, you can usually find them down the bean aisle or sometimes you can find them down the ethnic foods aisle. And if you wanna find them even cheaper, you can probably go to like a Lebanese or Middle Eastern store if you have one in your area. And yeah, they'll be basically just giving lentils away there. However, if you are trying to avoid the plastic packaging that they come in, or you just wanna find the absolute cheapest lentils that you possibly can, you probably wanna look in the bulk food section at your grocery store. And that goes for all things, beans, lentils, rice, flax seeds, quinoa, all that sort of stuff is definitely cheapest if you can buy it bulk. And this is actually a cool little trick Crystal showed me. So if you don't have any of your own like reusable lightweight bags yet to put the um, bulk food in, you can always go over to the produce section and then you can grab one of those paper bags that they intend you to put mushrooms in and then you can use that. And that is a much more environmentally friendly way to do it. And then you can either reuse that bag or of course you can recycle it in the paper recycling. So if you're not that experienced with lentils, uh, I will let you know that the split red lentils are the fastest cooking lentils. However, they don't retain their shape or texture very well. They kind of turn into a mush. So I find those ones better for adding to like soups, to thicken soups, or add to like curries and stuff like that. But if you want them to retain their shape, you should be looking for French lentils, 
Puy lentils, which are the same French and Puy lentils, and um, beluga lentils as well. And also the green lentils that I mentioned, they will keep their shape really well too. Oh, and I actually have a really good red lentil curry recipe from the first ebook that I released, Easy Vegan Muscle Meals. So if I can remember it, I'll put that in the description box for you guys and get a little freebie there. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the nutrition of lentils. So as I mentioned, they are amazing for athletes and for bodybuilders. Anybody can eat lentils. You don't have to be an athlete or a bodybuilder for <laughs> them to benefit you. But I know a lot of you guys that follow me and watch this channel are athletes as well and vegan athletes. So specifically so good for vegan athletes because not only are they really high in protein, but they're also really high in iron and in zinc. And those are two minerals that can be kind of hard to get on a vegan diet sometimes. Well, if you're not eating like lentils and beans and stuff, I guess it can be hard. But as you will see here, it's not that hard to get it because yeah, lentils are absolutely full of both of those things. So one cup of lentils provides our body with 20 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbs, and only one gram of fat. And I should mention, it's a really low glycemic food. So those carbs are not gonna digest very quickly at all. They're definitely a slow digesting carb. So for any of you guys that are worried about that, the lentil is a good food for you. More bananas for me. <laughs> lentils are one of the richest sources of folate. So in that one cup of lentils, you get almost 90% of your RDI of folate. And folate is a nutrient, it's actually a vitamin, vitamin B9, that helps our body to make new red blood cells. So another nutrient that we know that helps with our body making red blood cells is iron. And we talked about that, we said that it's high in iron. So in that cup of lentils, you get seven grams of iron. Sorry, seven milligrams of iron. Seven grams of iron would probably kill you. <laughs> and for men, that's about 80% of your RDI and for women that's about 40% of your RDI. So women need almost twice as much iron as men because of their monthly menstruation. But interestingly enough, athletes need more iron than non-athletic people. And um, this article that I found explains why. Athletes need more iron than the general population. Iron is lost through sweat, skin, urine, the gastrointestinal tract, and menstruation. Exercise, particularly high intensity and endurance types, increases iron losses by as much as 70% when compared to sedentary populations. Athletes lose more iron due to heavy sweating as well as increased blood loss in the urine and GI tract. Yeah, so I didn't know that. So I can't do a video talking about the nutrition of lentils without at least mentioning their fiber content. So lentils are super rich in fiber. Uh, so rich in fact that in that one cup of lentils you get 30% of your RDI of fiber which is quite high. And considering that most Americans don't reach their recommended daily intake of fiber, uh, I think like a bowl of lentils could definitely go a long way to helping move things along for a lot of people, if you know what I'm saying. So I know what a lot of you guys are thinking out there right now. You're like, Derek, I know that you think all this nutrition and everything is good, but you're not even gonna talk about the anti-nutrients, the lectins, the oxalates, the phytates that are trying to steal those minerals back from us and not let us absorb them. So it turns out that it's actually not as big of a deal as it may seem. So I know anti-nutrients are getting a lot of press lately, especially if you're reading any like paleo blogs or whatever, but really it's not that big of an issue if we just prepare the food properly and we eat it. And I'll explain to you guys what I mean here. So for those of you that don't know what lectins are, a really quick explanation is that they are chemical components that are found in foods which bind to minerals usually that are in the food and make it hard for our body to absorb those minerals. So the lectins that are uh, most commonly sort of studied and researched and known are on the oxalates, like I mentioned, phytic acid, and lectins as well. But it's not exclusive to those ones, those are just like the most prevalent and most common ones. So I did a little digging and I found a few studies on like phytic acid and um, lentils and that sort of thing. So this one here I found changes in levels of phytic acid, lectins, and oxalates during soaking and cooking of Canadian pulses. And these guys had some great findings. So here are their highlights. Lectins, phytic acid, and oxalates in pulse crops were lower than in soybean. Levels of lectins, phytic acid, and oxalates vary between pulses examined. Soaking decreases lectins and oxalates levels, but not phytic acid levels. Cooking reduced anti-nutritional factors except phytic acid in beans and soybeans. Okay, great, so we know that soaking and cooking takes care of the lectins and the oxalates, but what about that pesky phytic acid that is still there, trying to steal your gains, steal your nutrients, what the heck are we gonna do with it? So, it actually turns out that our bodies become better adapted to 
dealing with phytic acid um, during exposure, after exposure of it. So I'm gonna play a clip from Mike the Vegan here and I hope he doesn't mind that I took this clip from his YouTube channel. But yeah, he's a great guy. If you don't know his channel, definitely check it out. I'll put a link to uh, this, this video in the description down below. But yeah, he says it's so much better than me. So let's just listen to him. This study found that, yeah, we have a dip in iron absorption when we increase phytate consumption, but after a week or so, it goes back up to normal. This adaptation was not expected. And if that isn't good enough for you, you want to be really safe, eating vitamin C with your high phytate foods can cancel out that iron absorption blocking effect. This study found that 60 milligrams of vitamin C did the trick in overcoming a blast of 175 milligrams of phytate. That is just one medium orange, a half a cup of broccoli, or a quarter cup of red pepper, so it's really easy. All right, so now that we have learned all of that, I bet you guys are wondering, how the heck do I cook these? How do I eat them? How do I make them delicious? <laughs> so they're actually really simple to cook. If you've never done it before, just go out and buy some lentils and read the back of the package or just go online and like Google, how the heck do I cook these lentils? Um, but the basically you just cook them like rice and you wanna use three parts water to one part lentil and you just simmer it on like medium heat until the water all evaporates, until the lentils are cooked. And if you need to add some more water, then add more water. And if you find that there's still a bunch of water left over at the end and the lentils are cooked, just like pour that water off and you're good to go. Once you have those lentils cooked, there are a million options as far as what you can do with them now. So one of my favorite ways to, to eat them is to just like throw them into a stir fry, which I did last night, as you can see here. Uh, I just sauteed up some kale, a few spices, and then I just tossed the lentils in there and mixed it all up together and then plated it nicely in this bowl. And it was delicious, super easy to eat, really healthy, tons of protein, kept me nice and full all night. They're really awesome to throw into soups. You can really easily bump up the protein content of soups or any meal by adding a cup of lentils. And they're really, really good on top of salads. So if you're gonna use lentils for a salad, you probably want one that's gonna hold its shape. So like either green lentils or those French lentils, probably gonna be the best for that. But um, you could try you know, red lentil mush if you want on a salad and see how it goes. It might be good, who knows? But what I'm gonna show you here is one of my go-to meals when I just want something that is super quick, easy, satiating, comforting, but still like fairly nutritious and obviously high in protein so we can continue to make those gains. Uh, and what I do is I basically just add them to pasta. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I do it up a little bit differently. So what I do is I just add them to my brown rice pasta. So typically brown rice pasta doesn't have all that much protein or nutrients or fiber or anything like that. I just really like eating pasta and I love the, the taste and texture of brown rice pasta. So um, I find that adding a bunch of lentils to it along with the sauce and then maybe some greens to it as well is a really, really easy meal, super satiating, filling, delicious, easy to eat. And uh, yeah, I'll show you guys that right now. All right, so I've already gone and prepared the lentils in our Instant Pot. It's a great way to cook them, but you could always do them on stovetop as well. These are the poi lentils that I was talking about, also known as the French lentils. I think it's the best lentil going, but uh, yeah, that's up for debate. <laughs> so just to make the video easy, I've gone ahead and I've cooked up the brown rice pasta already. And this is actually cool brown rice pasta because not only is it spiral pasta, which is the best for holding on to sauce and different flavors, but they color it with uh, like natural, dyes. So you can see here in the packaging they just use carrot powder, tomato powder, and spinach powder to make the colors like that, which is pretty awesome. So that's the brand there that I use if you guys were curious, but any brown rice pasta will do. And then I've already washed some kale and we've got some tomato sauce here as well. So I'm sure you guys know where this is going. <laughs> it's all going into there. So I threw some orange bell pepper in there as well because we know that bell peppers are really good sources of vitamin C. And vitamin C, as we learned from Mike the Vegan, will help our body to neutralize the phytic acid and also help with iron absorption. So yeah, it's a good thing to incorporate that with lentils. And if you guys saw last week's video I did on why kale is so amazing, you'll know why I'm putting it in here. And if you haven't seen it, you should go back and check it out because man, Crystal and I did the funniest skit for that one. I don't have any funny skits for this lentil video. I just couldn't make lentils funny. Lentils are very serious, seriously nutritious. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but to me that looks pretty freaking delicious. I will have no problem smashing through this bowl 
And as you can saw, it's like four different ingredients that I put in there. It was so easy and so quick to make. Wow. So I just added some avocado to it just to up the healthy fats a little bit and um, it's looking pretty good if you ask me. This is definitely gonna be a good dinner. <laughs> I love when I work my dinners into the filming of these videos. I feel like I'm just so smart. So in that meal we have one cup of cooked lentils, two cups of chopped kale, two cups of spiralized brown rice pasta, one cup of tomato sauce, and a quarter of an avocado. So this meal is 736 calories. You can see 72% of the calories are coming from carbs, 13% are coming from fats, and 15% are coming from protein. So as we look down the list of nutrients that it has in it, you can see that it's a pretty nutritious meal. Definitely could be improved, I'm sure, by adding a few more ingredients, but for something so simple, I think it's pretty good. So a few that I would like to highlight here, are the fact that it has over 30 grams of protein and you can see that all the essential amino acids are well represented there. Lots of B vitamins, tons of folate, lots of vitamin A, some vitamin C in there as well. A little bit of vitamin E, could probably up that by throwing some nuts or seeds in it and lots of vitamin K. We know that's coming from primarily the kale. So this one here, calcium, it could be a little higher in calcium. You could bump that up by just adding a couple more cups of kale. It's really easy to eat once it's cooked, so you might as well. And then you can see the rest of the minerals are all pretty good as well, containing almost 50% of our RDI of zinc. All right, so I think that's it for this video. I'm gonna go and enjoy my 736 calorie meal here. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, learning about lentils with me. If you want to learn more about lentils, Plant-Based News actually just released a lentil documentary called A Miracle of Nutrition, and it's all about lentils, and you can check it out on their channel. I actually haven't watched it myself yet. I probably should have before I did this video, but um, I'm saving it to when I have 52 minutes to devote specifically to a video on lentils and that hasn't happened yet. But I'm glad that you guys devoted your time to this video and learned about lentils with me and I hope you guys enjoy my little recipe here at the end. Let me know what food you think I should cover next week and definitely hit that like button if you guys like this video. It always helps me out so much. So easy for you, so helpful for me. So I'll see you guys in a few days with another video. Definitely subscribe if you have not subscribed to me yet and here's some other videos I'd love for you guys to check out. If you wanna subscribe, the button's like right here or here and also download to my free ebook on how to plan vegan meals. It's there as well. So much love to you guys. Thank you guys for your attention and support. Talk to you soon.